Are you thinking about a radiation detector? You should definitely have one handy. In today's video, I want to help you find the best all-in-one EMF radiation detector for you and your situation. With the amount of wireless devices increasing around us, it's more important than ever to learn how to detect, measure, and eliminate as much EMF radiation as possible from your life. Oh yeah! Unfortunately, there's an EMF meter for almost any budget. Cha-ching! With your EMF detector in hand, you'll be part of a growing community who understands the dangers of this electromagnetic poison and is doing something about it. You'll be better able to protect your family and others and improve your overall health in the process. What does an EMF radiation detector even do? Mm -hmm. An EMF radiation detector, often called an EMF meter or scanner, is a handheld device that contains one or more sensors to measure the invisible EMF, electromagnetic fields, so prevalent today that are negatively impacting the health of many of us. So let's talk EMF in plain English. Before you buy an EMF radiation detector, it helps to understand some EMF basics and how it's measured. What is EMF? Imagine a radio tower sending out those up and down radio waves. That's a type of EMF, or electromagnetic field. Did you know that sunlight is EMF? It's just a tiny slice of the EMF pie. Most EMFs are invisible to us. Radio waves, TV waves, microwaves, x-rays, to name a few. So when you hear terms like ELF, extremely low frequency, and RF, radio frequency, you can think of them as different classes or ranges within EMF. How is EMF measured? Right now, there isn't an EMF meter that can measure everything on the EMF spectrum. Each meter out there measures a portion of the EMF pie, different ranges of wavelengths, classified by a unit called hertz. Generally, the more expensive the meter, the bigger range of hertz it can detect, or the more sensitive and accurate it is to a particular type of EMF. It will measure the amount of EMF within its detectable range and give you a reading on how intense it is. Since EMF intensity fluctuates and can be influenced by other sources of EMF, it's important to take several readings at different angles and times to get the most accurate measurement. What does hertz mean? Hertz, abbreviated HZ, makes the most sense to me when I understood that all EMF travels at the same speed, the speed of light. It basically travels in an up and down wave-like motion. And every time it goes down and back up, it's a cycle. Some of these cycles can be longer than football fields, while others are microscopic and take many millions of cycles to go the same distance as a longer wave takes to go up and down once. So a one hertz signal is an EMF that takes one second to do one cycle. The shorter the wavelength, the greater the hertz, and the more dangerous it can become. Talk about 5G, X-rays, gamma rays. But that doesn't mean the long ones can't hurt us. Too much of any EMF can be bad for our health. Cycles range from thousands to millions to billions or more per second, so you'll often see an added letter in front of the hertz like these. KHZ, kilohertz, a thousand cycles per second. MHZ, megahertz, a million cycles per second. GHZ, gigahertz, a billion cycles per second. For example, the GQ EMF 390 will measure RF radiation up to 10 gigahertz. If there's anything outside of that range, it won't be able to detect it. Currently, 10 gigahertz is the top of the range of meters, so trying to measure a cell tower's 5G signal is useless because 5G uses frequencies between 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. Currently, there is no consumer meter on the market that can measure 5G. Most all-in-one EMF radiation detectors will give an intensity reading in up to three areas. EF, electric field, measured in volts per meter, V slash M, Magnetic field, MF, measured in milligauss, little m, big G. Radio frequency, RF, measured in microwatts per meter, per meter squared or milliwatts per meter squared, and sometimes you'll see it in micro or milli per centimeter squared, but one milliwatt is equal to 1,000 microwatts. Electric and, ma and magnetic fields are typically lower hertz we get from electric poles and appliances, while RF measures the higher frequencies we get from microwaves, Wi-Fi, all of these like... Um, communication devices. So here's a tip. Don't get too hung up on volts per meter, milligauss, or microwatt, milliwatt. You only need to know what your unit, what unit your meter shows and what the safe levels are. Many meters will actually sound an alarm when you're outside of safe levels, 
but you really need to decide for yourself what safe levels are. What are safe levels of EMF? The problem here is that every country has different standards on what safe is, and then they make things more complicated by giving different standards for different wavelengths or hertz. And get this, currently the United States FCC regulations allow safe levels that are up to 100 million times higher than what Austrian Medical Association recommends. In general, Europe is more cautious and protective of their citizens, especially children's health, when it comes to EMF. In France, it's illegal to have Wi-Fi in schools or daycare where children under the age of six are present. The best rule of thumb is, the lower, the better. Let's talk EMF safe zone for living and bedroom areas, places where you spend a lot of time. Based on EMF expert Jeremy Johnson, you'll want any area where you spend lots of time to be at these levels. Electric field safe zone is between zero and one volts per meter. Avoid areas greater than 50 volts per meter. The magnetic field ideal safe zone is between 0 and 0 0.5 milligauss. Bedrooms should be between 0 and 0 0.1 milligauss and avoid areas greater than 2.5 milligauss. RF radiation, the ideal safe zone is between 0 and 1 microwatt per meter squared or 0 0.001 milliwatts per meter squared. Avoid areas greater than 10 milliwatts per meter squared or 10,000 microwatts per meter squared. With any readings above these recommendations, you need to consider doing things to bring the EMF levels back in or near these safe zones. When can EMF hurt you? Anytime you're outside the ideal safe zone, you're putting yourself at risk. The longer you are in it, the greater the risk. Think about sunlight. 15 minutes of direct sunlight can give you a sunburn, and getting too much sun over your life can lead to skin cancer. But a lot depends on how long you're out in the sun, whether or not you wear sunscreen and how sensitive your skin is. The same goes for EMF. Depending on the intensity, amount of time exposed, and our sensitivity, some experience side effects right away. Irritability, low energy, itchy skin, insomnia, headaches, while others won't notice any difference until years later. Fortunately, once you know where your EMF problem areas are, you can take simple steps to cut your EMF exposure down to safe levels and rest easy. Here's some features you can expect of all-in-one EMF radiation detectors. So keep these features in mind while shopping for the EMF radiation detector that's right for you. Danger zone, alert, or alarm. The detectable range, the hertz frequencies it can detect. Measures one or more of the following, electric field, EF, magnetic field, MF, or radio frequency, RF. And sometimes you'll hear RF called high frequency, or HF. Single axis or triple axis sensor, or tri-axis sensor. And every EMF detector comes with at least one sensor. Some have several. A single axis will measure the intensity coming from one direction, but EMF emits in many directions. In order to get a more accurate first reading, some EMF detectors have a sensor that measures from three directions, X, Y, and Z, the tri-axis. If you happen to have a single axis sensor, just take several measurements at different angles to get the best overall reading. And it's time to talk small budget EMF meters. In general, steer clear of small budget meters because they're only good for identifying hotspots for electrical and magnetic fields, meaning they won't measure RF. Their readings are often inaccurate, showing levels much higher than what a professional meter would indicate. This can cause people to freak out when things may be totally fine. Please just save up your money until you can get one of the recommended meters here. And if you really want to get one for fun, the two highest rated are the KK Moon and the Metarec meters, which you can usually pick up for around $30, and there are plenty of EMF detectors ranging between $30 to $100, many of which have improved features and will measure RF, but I have yet to find one worth recommending. Again, it's just best to save up and start with one of the all-in-one meters here in this video. Then, if and when you're ready to invest in a professional meter or a set of professional meters, you'll better understand how to operate them. So here's the best all-in-one EMF radiation detectors. Any one of these is an excellent choice to identify major problems in your home. Keep in mind that no all-in-one meter will outperform a professional meter. So if you're especially sensitive to EMF, you'll want to consider investing in a professional set of meters or hire an expert. Professional meters are more sensitive and accurate because they're designed to detect one type of radiation, EF, MF, RF, or EMI, which means you'll need a set of meters to cover all of your bases. A full set can run upwards of $1,100.
So if you're a beginner, one of the three reviewed here will be a great choice for getting started and it won't break the bank. My number one choice is the GQ EMF 390. For cost, you're looking between $95 and $120, and the detection range is up to 10 gigahertz. It measures EF, MF, RF. The pros, it has a tri-axis, alarm, real-time measurement, spectrum analyzer. It has the largest detection range, internal memory, and data logs. It can actually be output to a spreadsheet. Auto identification of likely EMF source and a rechargeable battery. The cons are, for some, the amount of data provided can feel a bit overwhelming. In summary, with the highest range of RF detection at the lowest cost, the GQ EMF 390 is my first choice when it comes to all-in-one meters. It shows all kinds of EMF on one screen with alerts and real-time changes. The spectrum analyzer can be incredibly helpful, and the company based out of Seattle has great customer service. If you want to save a bit of cash, you can buy the prior version, GQ EMF 380 version 2, and save some. The only difference is that the 380 version 2 range is limited to 8 gigahertz detection. My number two choice is the Cornet ED88T Plus. As far as cost goes, you're looking at about $200. The detection range is up to 8 gigahertz, measures EF, MF, RF. The pros is this is one of the more accurate all-in-one meters. With real-time measurement, data logging, it has a hard zipper case. The cons are it has the higher cost. The small screen is sometimes hard to read. It has single axis sensor. Quality of materials feels light and somewhat cheap. Real-time measurement is a little laggy and requires a battery. In summary, while being one of the more tried and tested all-in-one meters, its cost and small screen moved it to number two on my list. But still a great choice for getting started. Number three choice is the Tri-Field EMF meter model TF2. The cost here is between $145 and $168. The range is up to six gigahertz, measures EF, MF, RF, the pros are it's really easy to use, tri-axis, and has some weighted measures. The cons are for the simplicity, you don't get any cost savings and miss out on some of, some of the added features. You also need to be careful about your hand placement when holding it because it may affect readings of some of the fields. And it doesn't have an alarm. In summary, I like a lot of information, but that's not for everyone. That's why I included the Tri-Field TF2 on the list. So if you like things simple and straightforward, then you may want to pick one of these up. And I think that's why you really see so many recommending this one for beginners. But still, it's difficult to justify this one when you can get so much more for less with the GQ EMF 390. Before you go, let's do a quick recap. The best time to get an EMF radiation detector is today. In order to protect yourself and your family from this invisible pollution and pinpoint problem areas, devices inside and outside your home, you'll need to have an EMF detector handy. Join us at emfsafefamily.com. Yeah, that's what my daughter Beverly says, and I think she's right on. We've got lots of great information for you there on how to protect your family from EMF, create a sanctuary in your home, a place of healing and happiness in your home. And hopefully it goes a long way to uh, providing some great benefits to your long-term health for you and your family. Join us there. You can subscribe for more or catch more information on our website. Bye.